All right, guys, so we're going to talk about what happens in the back end and why the back end is important and why you're here to learn Node.js. All right. Now, think about it like this. I know you probably worked on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, remember, all of those things are what we see here in the front view. This is what the user sees. The back end is basically code that lives inside of the server. The server is just a computer, basically, and just a space inside of a computer. Think about it like that, right? So now when we land on this page on facebook.com, in reality, we land on a IP, right? So it could be something like 2100, whatever. It could be any number, right? You land on an IP, but when you say facebook.com, the user, it's easier for him to remember this instead of this long IP address to get to this website. So that's why we have the Facebook.com, Facebook.net, Facebook.org, etc. Right now, when you land on this page, automatically we basically we're doing a get request. A get request means, hey, I'm reaching out to the server, which is in the back end. Right, I'm reaching out to the server and telling him, hey, I just landed on Facebook.com. What happens after that? The server comes and basically returns back this HTML document and a whole bunch of other static files like JavaScript, like CSS. So if we come here and we click on inspect and you go to network, you refresh this page, you're going to see facebook.com and we get a status of 200, which means that, hey, everything went good. We basically got to send all the document to the user and everything is fine. Right. When we click on Facebook.com, you will see here it says, hey, request URL 200 request method, a get request, which means, hey, send me something. Right. I'm here. So send me something right now from there. There's the remote address. So you can see it's like a long IP and a, a port. You see that? Then from there, you have a whole bunch of other information. You know, these are the headers. This is information that uh, basically for the browser to know. All right, you have content type and basically it says text slash HTML. This is what we're seeing here, All right? This is what we get. We get this document. The browser reads this document and says, okay, this is a HTML page. Let's load it up. And as you can see, it has other stuff here on the head like hold on give me a second uh it has other stuff here like links uh which are you know css files you have script files which are javascript files right now if we come back to the network we can see here we could actually come and say okay what type of files we're getting so we got a whole bunch of javascript files we got a whole bunch of css files we got a whole bunch of images so all of these are actually being sent by the server to the user, right? When they land on this page and it all works from that HTML page. Cause when the HTML page shows up, then it starts loading all the other, um, files and formats that are here, like here, like, okay, we got a GIF file. And then as you can see down here, you're going to see content type image slash GIF. Right. And then the same thing here, content type image slash PNG. So pretty much the first thing that loads is a page. Now, what I want you guys to think about this is when you land on a page, the server is the one that serves the user with the type of file that they're going to see on that route. Right. If I come to, uh, let's say facebook.com slash video now I'm looking at another route right I'm looking at another place other than the facebook.com so I have to have a route on the back end to show it to the user right now as you can see it says you must be logged in now this is where authentication comes in this is where if you register to a website for example you come here you register right when you click this button here, you do a post request. A post request means you're posting to the server and then the server is going to get that data 
whatever you put in here joe santos phone number password birthday gender when you click enter or you click on create account what it does it basically sends that information to the back end and now the back end goes like okay i received this information right and then once they receive the information, then they decide to do something with that information. Now for a registration form, what you're going to do is you're going to take this information, save the, the user's data into a database, and you're going to have one area where basically it's like, okay, one line is for that user. So that, and that user has his name, his phone number, his details, all his details are inside in the database right now whenever you want to log in now what this happens is basically you do another post request you put in the email and the password here and then you click login and then what happens is the user sends that information to the server right which is the back end it sends the, the information to to the server and then the server basically matches it it says okay if the user has the same email in the same password as what we have here in our database then we're going to let him in when we let him in we're going to show him another page right now I want you guys to think about it like this there's get request get request means when you land on a page right and then post request is when you're sending data from the front end to the back end all right now I know this might seem a lot, but this is just, I'm breaking it down in, in very simple terms. Now, I want you guys to, if you get lost or in any situation, come back to this video, listen to what I just told you, and everything will make sense. Always think about it like this. Get request means, hey, I'm getting something from the server, right? Send it to me on the view here. A post request means I'm posting it from here, from the front end to the back end. So I'm sending them information. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.